All right, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, it's E here with 25K Trading. So we had a crazy day with oil. Um, we're going negative, you know, negative in these May contracts. Uh, I'll talk about that today along with equities in a little bit. Uh, and I'll go ahead and let everyone filter in while, uh, while the stream starts. But uh, yeah, welcome, guys. Hope you guys had a great weekend. What's up, guys? What's up, Jordan? I'm pretty good, man. How are you? Where have I been? Been around, just not, <laughs> not on YouTube, but I'm back, guys. All right, so we got a little bounce off, uh, off this one support right here on SPY. I shorted a little too early this morning at 284. But, you know, it turns out to be all good because we had a little crater in oil uh, over the weekend. So we're going to pay attention to that, uh, uh, to the June contract because the hoopla about the May contract, I assume, is over. Uh, but right now, when it comes to oil, um, you know, they always say oil, um, you know, oil is an indicator of, of the market. Uh, when oil goes down, you'll see equities going down later. And that's why I learned... Back in you know 2014 when I first started trading oil, um, but you know obviously it's not having the same kind of, um, it's not having the same kind of effect uh, right now. Um, so, anyways, I'm I'm doing some stuff in the background here. I'll start again uh, here in one or two minutes. But right now I'm keeping our eye out on SPY. Uh, so we're we're here the last hour of the trading day. And we just want to see where the price is going down. Now, today has been actually quite bearish. Uh, if you think about it, we we opened down, and we're ne we we just recently bounced off that uh, you know opening minute too as well. Uh, so I want to see whether or not the buys come in towards the end of the day, or it keeps. Oh, now that we switched to sells last week on Friday, we saw a massive short cover into the highs. Uh, so today again, I want to see um, if it wants to sell, and the reason why. I'll, I'll tell you guys why the reason why I see selling is because of the technical rollover of the May uh, The May and the June oil contracts. So if you look at the oil contracts here I think my I think trading view broke or something it's not working for you for me Okay, so U.S. oil here is stopped at one, but we all know that the May contract for oils. This is a different. Uh, depends on what exchange you're looking at, uh, but this is the CFD uh, for the May oil contract. Uh, we went negative. I think we went as high as almost negative forty. So essentially, the producers had to pay forty dollars per per contract in order for uh, the buyer uh, to take it. Uh, now. That is crazy for uh, for me to see because oil should not be going underneath under zero, right? It's a it's a it's a product. You don't clean someone's house and then you pay someone to to clean their house. It just makes no sense, right? Uh, so, crude oil here in the June contract is uh, trading towards more about twenty one dollars, and then in the July contract is trading more closer to twenty seven. So we do see. Uh, that contango, which is uh, the month that we are in, uh, where VIX would be around 40 or so, and the next month would be, I don't know what it is right now, 
uh, would be around like to say 35 or so, uh, that would be backwardation. And depending on how you trade, uh, those trading on uh, those kinds of curves uh, can benefit you. For example, as a long as a long on USO, you know the um, the fund for that tracks oil futures. That fund theoretically will keep going down in a bear market where there's contango because if the contract i'm gonna make up two numbers trades 20 and then trades at 26 right when the contract rose from 20 to 26 there's a chance of 26 contracts the next month contract will roll down to 20 thus making uso stay, stay the same price but uh when i'm gonna start roll upwards to a higher price and when it comes back down that decrease in price will affect uso so you can tell right now uso is probably not that uh I want to say going bust, USO, you know how those UWTI and UGAS, they were actually, UWTI had like, our DWTI had like a billion dollars in that fund, and it was recently made to be closed down because it's too risky of a product. Now the single leverages, uh, such as USO, still has that kind of decay because it's trading on futures. Uh, and that's what happens when you trade on futures, essentially is that depending on how the market is trading whether it's looking forward or backwards right for the price to go either higher or lower um it would affect how you, you how you long for example vix vix was in, is in a state of backwardation right let's go to vix All right vix vix is popping here is reclaiming that 200 ema so i just want to point that out too so i I would love to see VIX pop higher and higher. We're at this bottom of this, and I want to pop us back up to around 60 ish for VIX. But for VIX, uh, the futures contract will work like this, right? The the next month, not this month's contract, is lower. So if, again, right now it's 38 to 34, if it rolls over from 38 to 34, um, again, these are just numbers off the top of my head, 38 to 34, and then VIX goes back from 34 to 38 the underlining etf will benefit from that role because it does not fall based on that uh next uh next contract what's up guys how you guys all doing i just find i find oil crazy today guys and guys let me just Alright. Um, Jordan, I completely think the June contract is just gonna slam down. I know a lot of you guys ask me, hey, what about oil? What about that stuff? Natural gas. Natural gas popped today. Last time I checked natural gas, it was above 1.9. Uh, so uh, to me, natural gas. It used I used to think of as little and big brother, but I think there's more of a more of a late start. I think this pop should have happened one month earlier. But if you look on natural gas, or if you look at UNG, uh, you'll see that they have a head and a head and uh, inverse head and shoulders. It's not giving me the feature symbols, which is incredibly annoying right now. But uh, if you look at the features for uh, for um, for natural gas, you'll see some kind of head and shoulders. It doesn't really show that well UNG, but uh, you'll be actually no, it does show it here. I'm sorry guys, I'm just on the one hour chart. Uh, so for UNG, we can kind of see the head and shoulders here. Shoulder, head, shoulder, and then this is the neckline. Neckline right here. Just pretend that's neckline. So we can probably see some bullish movements uh, for UNG possibly to head towards this $15 range. 
realm. Now, I don't know the conversion for uh, NG, but that's something to look for. When natural grass runs, it usually runs real hard for multiple days. So just keep an eye out for this guy. I think we can easily blow up a little bit more here as well. Um, see what a spy is doing towards the end of the day. I want to see a massive, uh, essentially longs to just to be liquidating here. I these are bear flags, right? It's the same kind of thing uh, when you're looking at when it goes up. These little bull flags. Where right now, it's making these little five-minute bear flags and heading down. Um, I think it continues to do what the trend is today, and that's to go down. It, it tried to go up and make a new high, and today was actually one of those days where we didn't make a new high. So. Usually in the last two weeks as a bear, I feel very defeated when we go up and see a new high, right? It doesn't, in, in new highs don't indicate exhaustion to me. In a sense, it just sense whatever the previous short period trend, you can look at moving averages, uh, you know, what goes up, keep going up. But with this exhaustion, we make a lower low and a lower high. So just guys remember that today, at least on SPY, we make a lower low and lower high. Uh, so that to me is important, it means probably the momentum here is folding, fading, but if you guys like to use uh, momentum indicators and oscillators, um, they might tell you, you know, if you're using kind of some short squeeze Momo or something like that, using Bollinger Bands, uh, maybe you'll see some, you know, we're, we're, we're no longer up the, in the upper band, right? We're no longer at a higher standard deviation to the upside. So I don't know. Um, I don't know where we're gonna head here, but I think, again, tomorrow could be Black Friday. I have never seen oil trade the way it does. No storage left. You guys are, you guys are, um, yeah. So the thing I do agree with you, um, links is that we've had this crazy movement in oil, but as you can see here in SPY, that effect has not trickled. And people are saying, hey, that's probably because everyone is looking at this May contract. The May contract is expiring tomorrow. So it's not that important to look at. The volume is very small. I think a third or fourth of the June contract. So it's not important. But again, I don't care. This contract rolls happens every once a month. And every month, for as far as I remember to 2014, I even hear some one of the oil traders of the head uh uh, the head in strategy for I think Wells Fargo was on Bloomberg earlier today. He said he started um, being being an assistant of sh this natural gas period in the 80s or 90s or something like that. He said this is the only time he's ever seen uh, something go negative, but not to like this extreme. Well, again, U.S. oil, I want to point it out, traded as high as almost negative forty dollars. Negative forty dollars. The contract went negative, right? Why can I not buy? Because your broker is probably prohibiting you from buying oil. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see if you're trying to bring up oil right now and then your broker is saying, this thing is growing too crazy right now. It's all over the news. It's too risky for you for us to let you do that. So they're not letting you buy. So that could be exactly why uh, they're not letting you buy. Um, but honestly, you know, this is a, it's a, it's a, essentially it's a, like a, it's a vertical issue, right? It fixed gas, let's go with gasoline, right? No one's driving. I don't even remember the last time I pumped gas uh, because I don't go out the house anymore. So um, maybe like three weeks ago, right? I don't, I mean, I live in Los Angeles, so it's not like I have to drive real far to get to, to, get to anywhere, right? Um, refineries, right? They need, they probably bought oil thinking this $20 was the cheapest, that this was the cheapest that they were to get. And they now don't have anywhere to store the gasoline. It's the same issue, gasoline, right? Other products like, you know, products that use oil, right? A lot of these things, no one's consuming these. We can't even buy things at retailers right now. So it's not just driving. It's a whole, you know, it's a whole vertical issue that everyone's already satur saturated with this oil. And it's just simply not enough places to put it. And I want to go back to this OPEC Plus thing. The OPEC Plus was essentially saying we need to cut you know three four million barrels um well you know they they cut the bear or i'm sorry three hundred thousand i'm sorry 10 million barrels 10 million barrels right so um the crazy thing is is that america produces just so much oil it's just nothing it's nothing that's why brent is actually elevating in price and that's why wti texas crude is essentially um, U.S. We do produce enough 
to be self-sufficient like if we really wanted to we don't we probably don't have to import any kind of oil at least overseas we can get it from maybe mexico or canada even um, but the prices we would have to pay would be much higher and that that would be the trade-off and honestly if xle the energy companies go out first because they can't pay their debts because this bear market has been going on for at least 20 2014 2014 is when we had oil from a hundred dollars drop 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 down to 50 60s 50 40s from the 40s drop down to 20s right and then we rebounded remember that bullshit article on wall street journal about you know how sudden like storage got cured and we went up to the high heavens and that's when the both the equity and the oil markets rebounded right we can pinpoint an oil and in 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 um in 2016 that or was it 2015 that we bombed we we the market bottomed when we hit lows in oil lows in equity and we together went up right but do we have the same kind of scenario here today right so right now you can look at spy right spy is trading at 282 it was 230 right it's essentially we're at the highs we can essentially say we're the highs you know end of 2019 2020 we're close to those highs we're good we're close enough right so to see the oil market at extreme bottoms and to see the equities near extreme highs is almost crazy to me crazy because the bear market for oil took six years from 2014 to 2020 to make two lows a lower low it took them uh, you know, when a bottom in 2015, 2016, it took them, you know, it took them another 50 years to see the, the the teens level, right? Another five years to see the teens level, pretty much. Um, and oil has never recovered. So when people say this or, old correlation of when equities crash and then, I mean, so oil crashes first and then equities crash afterwards, that is discounting the Fed. The Fed has stepped up big in the last four years from 2016 to 2020 to essentially break out the, this the rut right oil was pushed up equities was pushed up but oils dropped equities remained higher so what does this say it means that essentially no one's using oil and maybe oil is not a good indication of the um, economy anymore um, but all i can say is that today when oil went negative 40 that scared the shit out of some people i bet and honestly again i cannot see I don't even care how great your fundamentals of your uh, company are. I do not see a lot of oil companies or energy companies staying afloat, like simply not even bailed out, just shutting the doors and doors and saying like, this was a run, this is a hell of a run, you know, but we gotta, we gotta close, uh, we gotta close down these, um, this business. Essentially take a total loss, right? You can't decrease, you can only take t total losses. And Coach Trilam, I think you are correct. Um, I think that the stimulus bill, uh, is a wild card right today they i think they declined it again the democrats right the, our democrats passed uh uh drafted a new version and it was declined or whatever i don't even know what the fuck's going on with the stimulus bills to be honest with you guys but all i know is that um um uh, you know like we're giving more money to small businesses hospitals will be looked after you at you know sh shipping and mail services will be looked at um um so I don't know i oh i'm just looking for, again i'm looking for a place to go long in the future um you know short signing is here but i'm every day here shorting shorting trying to get a, a better position we actually have a reversal candle here and this is a really really weird reversal candle here on spy towards the end of the day because we have this for first if you look on here the candle here is a is a hammer right this 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 candle usually proves useful and down downtrends right we see a red one down here it's not that solid down here but you can still kind of see the effect where essentially the price wanted to go down and it came up and then closed you know closed close to where it opened um and then on the next candle which is printing today is this shooting star candle essentially the price opened low went up and then it was squashed back down it's very interesting to see these two candles because these two candles should usually be flipped i i don't really see a lot of these candles like a hammer and then a reversal it's usually a reversal and then a hammer because the reversal says stop price, stop here. And then the hammer says, no, we don't want to go down, right? They're trying to reverse us. We, we kill that reversal and re remain the trend to be, you know, either up or down. Last pop came from, 
but this last this last shooting this start shooting star here the, i wish the wick was higher made a new high and spy but either way is i think it's it's the, it's there it's a shooting star at the top now i need two of these to confirm i need two of these in a relatively short amount of time to confirm which i don't see and that believes to me right now the trend can go either up or down to either the 20 uh, to 290 or it can go back down to this 275 but at this part i would say again i'm biased as a bear at one point this has got a crack and we already know this is rigged so um and I, I don't say that as like you know a bad way to say it it's it's clearly rigged by by the fed right so we just got to see how long time we can ex we can we can see like we can we, we can essentially wait for how much time can we afford to wait for right yeah so you can't buy so depending on your broker and depending if you're like margin or not margined i imagine that if you don't if you don't have a margin account then they're not going to let you buy that kind of stuff the leverage the leverage indexes go crazy like for example the three x's when you go 33 percent can go up to like a hundred percent loss theoretically right and that to me is just crazy uh so i think that they completely disabled the non-leverages uh because and they're protecting you they're either protecting you or trying to make the markets go up because there's a high chance of also when the broker disables your console it doesn't help the shorts it only helps the longs right so we're here near the, clo the close of the day i short around 284 here today on spy um i had the target of around you know you know 275 276 around here this area uh don't know if we're getting it today i'm not too sure if i want to hold it overnight either just mainly because i've been fucked overnight but it's the second part i'm trying to convince myself why it's a good idea and it's probably not going to be a good idea um we see uh, you know the divergence here play out on the one hour so on spy you can see that uh, you know we have a higher high in prices here but for the macd it's lower highs right macd's lower highs price had highs so you can kind of see that there was divergence and then i might have shorted it a little too early but uh, we see this divergence finally play out in the last two or three hours here uh, where it's going forward again closing price would be very important here i just want to see just like on friday if the fomo is still there the buying if there's a huge green bar at the end of the day that means the fomo is still there but i cannot again maybe my my brain is too puny to understand this that the may oil contracts went negative and not just negative one or two dollars it went negative to almost forty dollars so that to me is just crazy so um i don't i don't know I, I, I honestly don't know like the market is very you guys you guys obviously know if you guys are looking at fundamentals at current pe models p valuations too high even if this coronavirus didn't even happen right there are some some things are too high uh you have amazon netflix bullying it like going up today trying to hit new highs um like it's nothing amazon again i'm calling the top at 450 uh 2450 that's the top for that i think uh but it just it's just crazy like the biggest biggest drop in oil and biggest red we've had and we lead to a one percent down in xle let me guys show you xle right now xle theoretically just bottomed out right it's barely down for the day minus 3.8 for the day guys for xle but the good thing about xle is that imagine if this was the chart the retracement and then the fall so out oh, of man. everything you can probably say xle is a good short back down to 22 right the only thing is i would be definitely hedged to the upside because anything can happen you know things go very nutty when oil goes low there are a lot of things that happen on this world that are just straight up nutty when it happens because a lot of countries out there are completely undiversified. They're completely undiversified. So you look at Saudi Arabia, right? They're trying to become green energy 
um, you know, pushers, right? Because they know oil won't last. Uh, they're trying to be more diversified through investing and banking, um, right? But then you have other countries like Venezuela, right? Russia, um, Russia you know, yeah. the larger OPEC nations, even places like Mexico, Nigeria, uh, very, you know, country, Nigeria that, you know, oil rich, right? So, like, th those countries may fail. Like, those countries, essentially, it's like, think of, like, Venezuela, like Exxon, like Exxon Mobil, is Venezuela, right? I'm sure our energy companies have a higher market cap than some of those countries, right? So, like, those countries will fail and will bring down the globe with them too. Right? What's up, man? How you doing? What's up? I'm doing pretty well, Leo. How are you? Good, good. Uh, do you think the bear market has started? Merit market has started since February, my man. Well, I mean, the, the, this one. The <laughs> yeah, last yeah, push, yeah. Man. I, I mean, you know I, mean I hope so. You know what I mean. So, so this is my SPY chart. So this is the only right. way these impulses make sense now. So for me, I only thought maybe we'll hit 200 or lower here at SPY. But I'm calling the shot right now that we hit this 2016 low here and we go even lower. And like you guys may call me insane, but we're going lower than the 2016 lows. Right. Dude, I think, dude, I think the first first target, first target in SPX, I was, I was speaking for SPX. Maybe not this extreme. Maybe. Yeah, I think, I think the the like twenty five seventy something like that, or twenty four seventy, twenty four seventy. I think like the that market get target. really bad, like really, 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 really bad, really, really quick, and that's the only thing, right? You know, I think it was very stupid of me to ignore the sentiment because I've had this bear thesis since I was f in February. I've charted everything out, my moves and everything. And then all of a sudden we hit the bottom. Everyone's like, oh, this is going to go lower. This is going to go lower. And me included. Me too. I'm not going to lie. I was in that bear crowd too. So right now I think we've had enough news that I almost felt like I was convinced. You know, as a smart person, I felt almost convinced that the coronavirus recession and depression fears were going to go away overnight. I thought I was convinced. I'm, I'm either very stupid, too, too, too ignorant, or, you know, I don't know. But I don't think this recession, depression fears are gone. The stock market uh, it's, dropping it's not, 30% is dude, one it's indicator. Not gone, dude. Right? It's, they, not it's, gone, it's one indicator. It's, it's, but the it's oil... It's there. I mean, it's there. Oil dropping like it is is another indicator. I don't understand how they're just pumping up tech today, pumping up healthcare tomorrow, pumping up whatever banks on the other day. Once the you know this the new loans come out, I bet XLF goes back up, right? It could be simple as that stupid to keep the market afloat because no one wants. You to know what, me. though, bro? You know what, though, oil positions, mother of all buys, is coming up, man. If if you catch the bottom, it's gonna be a fortune, I guess. So what would cause oil to bounce? Uh, I think the the I don't know uh, who the fuck knows. Maybe more cut. I don't know. See, it's a black but sheep event. It has to be black catch sheep. It, if you catch, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not like you know. It's not like what well, that will cause. It, but but if if. Uh, if it's going to pump at least for fifty dollars, gonna be I guess good money. But uh, for now, for now, it's just I don't know. It's just dead, dead after. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. I I think that it's not by voluntarily cutting it because cutting it is clearly not doing oil any favors. We've been cutting oil for six years. Increasing it, cutting yeah. it, increasing it. I don't give a fuck. I don't even care if we're increased or decreased since 2016 levels. The only way to solve this issue is to reset. And reset takes two... Th There's two ways to reset. One, to go bankrupt. Right. Essentially, oil producers can only turn the faucet down so much that turning it back up will cost them more. Right. So they can't turn it off completely. So... Maybe this price will force them to come to change their mind and actually just shut their business because they realize even if oil bounces to 40, will that take 40 years? Right? 
Number two yeah. is war. We can yeah. America I, can stir US, some shit up, man. US 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 opening a war against Iran or something like that. We can, uh, closing yeah, we, the Strait of Hormuz or something like that. You know, something big. You know, the US can is can right now either do something with Venezuela or do something in the Middle East that would cut down oil production in the world and artificially again inflate oil prices. This will also yeah. boost the industry too as well. Again, war is bad. People shouldn't die. But I'm saying, there are people out there that make these kind of decisions based on economic factors. But don't be surprised if something bullshit breaks out because of something little. It's just a lot of pent-up stuff. Yeah, but I do agree with Penn Odom. Oil and gas, not buys. Do not, there might be a good buy on oil and gas near the future, but I'm right now thinking all equities go down. XLE, energy sector, drags financial sector i think once the banker I, again war is not going to happen because i think we're past bar, bar, barbaric uh ways of um, doing war a financial war is much more viable these days um do a financial war on u.s energy sector bankrupt them take xlf down to as well right everyone essentially loses right you, that's the only way to be it to be done xle yeah. to be bankrupt xlf to be dragged on i don't even care about Right now, the coronavirus is because that's such old news. The new news is how do we solve this recession? It's not about when do we come out, when do we go in. Is when the recession right now we're in the recession. How do we fight it to, so it doesn't become severe? How do we do not turn it to a depression? And yeah. that's what I think America is should be thinking about. Not whether or not you know if we solve the coronavirus. Coronavirus is obviously coming out here like it's a big issue, but Right now, coronavirus is just accelerant. It's just like fuel. The, the, there was an existing problem that was burning, and the coronavirus came in and dumped gallons upon gallons of you know, fuel onto this issue. Oil was never solved since 2014, right? Underlying fundamentals of the market weren't solved since 2016, right? These problems are now coming out into the open. And if any company out there was doing financial fraud, I bet we see some companies break. There's got to be some companies out there doing something really shady that this market come down is actually hurting them a lot. They're about to break. And also multiple other, you know, retailers and other stuff going bankrupt too. I hate to talk like this. Again, it's a very pessimistic kind of way. And maybe that's why the market is going up because there's optimists out there that say this can happen. But I'm going to tell you guys right now when the market does go into recession and if stocks do follow and if they do, you can say, oh, that was the most predictable recession. Just like how this pop was one of the most predictable pops. All right. Again, stimulus bill. Stimulus shouldn't be, is already all factored in. Yeah, I mean, I Stimula. agree wholeheartedly. Like, I had that discussion earlier with my dad, and it's just like, we don't know what, like, strife is. Like, we don't know what could happen down the road because you just it hasn't happened yet right and there's nothing else to compare all this to like you could compare it to like world war ii but even then it's like you can't because there's an enemy but this is like completely different right yeah so i think a lot of people were you know even me included i had the theory that this might turn out to be like 2016 so in 2016 we dipped double bottomed and then we ripped to new highs and no man, man this time uh, this time this time is kind of different it feels different and mm. and the the stimulus shit is already priced in you can almost like it you can kind of say like this last four years are kind of like the blow off top right the extreme buying that doesn't make any sense right during the trump years because i'm gonna lie when i first in the trump breakout happened it didn't make any sense to me but i'm like ah oh, fuck it go with the story go with the narrative right let's go with it Yes, uh, e minis. I would love to do e minis, but for some reason, uh, Trading View is locking me out out of all the futures, uh, future tickers. So I can't. I want to go to the futures, but I can't, unfortunately. So we got SPY here, Jordan. 
I just, I just, dude. Okay, so since Jordan, and I haven't seen you forever, and you just came back today. If you saw me the last two weeks, I was pretty much shorting every time, and if I got a good position intraday, I would try to ride it overnight, and then essentially my position just got blown up on a consistent basis. Um, on a consistent basis, and right now, um, you know, for SPY, the fifty percent retrace i think it's just beyond key i don't care that we're near it we're above it we're close to it we're touching it since the fact that we're even close to the 50 percent than we are to the bottom means to me right now it's a short and the range right here is so great that it feels so crazy whenever this thing moves three percent but nasdaq only rose six percent and dow only rose two percent last week so It's just like almost like, you know, futures trading for me is just very hard uh, in, in, in the amount of ticks it goes because it can just tick, 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 and you can get like 20 points, right, in like half a second if you're not careful. Uh, so I don't know. How, how, how are you doing on uh, ES uh, futures on the, on the minis? Futures is just good for, to, see, to see just the, 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 the overall, overall picture, you know? If you don't have a, you don't have a very, very big pulse or very big account, uh, I think the future is uh, no, just too dangerous. Yeah, I mean personally, I stay away from futures even without all this crazy stuff. But even seeing like how nutty it can get, it's like. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Futures just track spy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To tracking the overall the market picture you know well that's the thing with the futures it can be completely different like it might go like super you know deep in the red and then, like at the opening bell it'd be like flat yeah if you go to a bigger time frame bigger bigger time frame and put a, a kind of a trend line uh and you can see kind of a breadth of a market you now. To me, they speak they speak certain certain like words, you know. Yeah, my mind has been fucked with. Like, oh my god, this is why technical trading reigns supreme. It's because we as humans can only think one way, Jordan. So, I mean, it's, yeah, so. It's just like, I cannot comprehend, but I can, the thing is, I'm not like, I can say I'm going fucking crazy, but I know exactly, I, I'm like, I'm one of those insane people that knows why they're insane, which makes me even more insane, if that makes sense. This is that not here, man. That, that, that makes you dangerous. <laughs> that makes me dangerous, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the dangerous man's a desperate man, whatever that is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But E, e man, like, it reminds me, did you see that movie, The Big Short? I have not, no. I actually have okay. never seen that movie. Homework, homework, because that's what it's like looking at, like, your, your your original thesis going down every time, every time. The guy marks on the board, like, each, like, day for trades, and then you see the number go more and more in the red until eventually, like, something flips, and then it makes, like, an insane amount at the end. That's okay. So I've, right. I've been trading like that guy. I, you know, I know something's here on the short side, especially on VIX, guys. Especially on VIX. You know, it's because yeah. VIX has not been dropping. Look at VIX. VIX was crazy today. VIX is not wanting to go under 39. And the fact that it's under contango, or I'm sorry, backwardation, where the next, con next month's contract is lower than where it is. And it's not pointing to any increased volatility. It's crazy. And then you guys go on Twitter. You can type in the ticker VIX. Every person says VIX is dead, short VIX down, right? That you can see the compare from 2008 charts where VIX barely went back up. I don't think VIX so is going back to 90. Huge, VIX can go easily up above 60 in one yeah, day. It, it, yeah. VIX, yeah, yeah. It refuses, uh, the VIX refuses to go under the 39. Man. Yeah. 39 for VIX is very, is very. Uh, big uh, feeling of uh, fear, you know? Yeah, yeah you can see the healthy. VIX air pocket. It's got a big air pocket in between. You can see the MACD, like, getting pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. VIX 39 above is, like, around 40. It's not, it's not healthy. Come on, it's not healthy. And look, the VIX has claimed, reclaimed the 200 EMA here.
So we a have 40, breakout 40, here, guys, on VIX. We have breakout, continued yeah. breakout. Breakout and retracement. So, guys, again, trade VISC, VIX at your own, you know, own risk. But to me, I have my money on VIX. Dude, I'm not trading VIX. I don't hold a position, but I keep an eye on it just because I know, like, that's where it dictates everything. Yeah, Especially yeah, on, like, triple lever stuff, it would be, like, super careful with that. I'm looking yeah, for a break upwards in VIX, and then I'm looking for it to drop back down like this. Essentially, this second break is going to confirm the bear market. This one's going to confirm the bear, right? And then the, when we're in the bear market and the price is going down, VIX will drop down. We should see VIX go down with the bear market. VIX should not be going up where we're in this bear market. Right now, essentially to me, I think is that where this up, this huge up move is going to be completely countered sometime. I don't know when. Negative thirty-seven. So ugly. Dude, dude, one of my one of my friends today got marching called. Man. When you get a call from the merchant man. Oh, he, he, he was just ping, you know, out of the market. He was long on oil. Damn. He was long on oil. I told him when he when he had a thirty percent of his account. Uh, I told him like get it out. Get it's not. Out it's not now. worth it. Oil is not even worth to trade right now. Like the producers oh, don't even know man. what price it will be at. You he, know. He had, uh, it's not it's not like in my country you can't see the big 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 accounts like you know uh these accounts and or, or or you know well our country is small country people but cannot invest big money here he had eighteen thousand dollars in his account now he has six ten jesus christ manage risk good god oh dude i i told him like you know Days ago, like last week, I told him, dude, just, just, just you know, accept that loss, just be like, you know, get over with it. He said, hey, if, if oil drops, like, you know, oil futures drops, like, mm, around $10, if WTI drops, like, 20 21 the Saudi Arabia and Russia will bankrupt. They will not let themselves bankrupt. I said, like, dude, they will not get bankrupt even the oil is for free. Because they have like citizens to suck, you know. I I told him like you know they will not get busted because well, uh, I think you should know that every debt of a, of a uh, government goes to the people. You know, people will pay for it. Uh, I, and he got he got margin call to them. He said like I got margin call. And my first question was, how about Russia and Saudi? Did they, did they vanish from a map? Uh, no, I said, well, bro. I told him what to do. I mean, I get it. Like, I'm doing, like, I'm kind of doing the same thing with natural gas, but, you know, I only got five grand on it, so it's not, like, a huge, but, like, any sort of, like, massive size or gain to hold over, and, like, <laughs> you're you're gambling at, at this point. Like, until you see yeah, some sort of bottom. Of course, of course, of course Robert. You, you, it's, like, uh, if if you even go very very low, uh, your account will hold it, right? And when you have an eighteen thousand dollar account and and you are risking over like twenty two percent of your whole account on one oil, only on oil, that's just that's just bizarre. that's just stupid, you know. Mm. Well, listen, in my country, the average salary is sixty dollars. And uh, if you earn even like you know, one uh, percent out of that eighteen thousand dollars, if you earn like two hundred and something three hundred dollars, it's quite good, you know. Yeah. You can survive a month. Like, you know, I know in Canada and USA, in LA especially, it's a Starbucks money, but in here, in here, it's a decent amount of money. Yeah, yeah that's true with the exchange it's, rates. Yeah, yeah, of course, and and. Uh, um, he was he was doing quite good. I myself only trade like you know forty thousand dollar account, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. But you know, over risking like that, 
over risking like that on one asset and oil. Dude, 22% of your account on one asset? Robert, can you imagine mm -hmm. that? I can see it. I can see it. I mean, I've seen it with like, the, like those JNUG and all that stuff. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, <sighs> over with it. I, everything we do, we do ourselves, man. That's it. We live to oh, fight man. another day. Yeah. yeah. But he quit trading, he said. Not for me. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you can still hold cash in the account and walk away. Well, nobody makes you trade anything. Whatever. Yeah, but when you take a hit like that, it kind of you also take a hit in your know, in your heart. Yeah, of course, of course, it's it's gonna hurt a lot, man. It's gonna hurt a lot. I I I got last week. I got uh, uh you know. Uh, I got lost. I got lost, like you know, nine hundred dollars. But I had a stop loss. It hit my stop loss. I said, like, okay, get over with it, and that's it, you know. Yep. Well, the, the WTI, maybe you can see that. Maybe you, you can see that the ranging period. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. In that ranging period on the bottom, I bought and I put a stop loss, and it hit the stop loss in the bottom. So, okay. Fine, but he was holding it since the since the break, the, the Trump pump, you know. Third of third of uh, he opened the position third of April. And on the like on a tip, man. He put on a tip, like right on the top, and he was holding it. Oh, that's it. We just. And new new trades, new things. Yeah, Be careful. Do not over risk. Not over risk. If you have a chance, if you have a chance, there is always a trade. All right, guys. So we're watching Spy here, uh, S and P five hundred yeah. tracker, and we're gonna or the um ETF for S P five hundred, and it's the last five, ten minutes, and we should see some heavy volume. I just want to note today that. Volume today has been overall extremely low. Monday levels low. <laughs> so we'll see here today if they want to slam it. Uh, we have yet to make a new low yet. It's been, you know, a little bit of time. So let's see whether or not we want to be dragged down here to make new lows. If the market maker here wants to close, we'll see here through the last 10 minutes. Yeah, but the volume, even with the market open this morning, the volume was just, ugh, it was nasty. It was not big. It was not big at all. So I, I had actually uh, a thought today that markets would keep rising to the upside until I saw the oil happen. And I think when, and I honestly thought my trade was going to go to shit um, because I didn't see anything happening. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of stuff is driven by news. And I'm always watching news. I'm like, oh, this is a boring day. And then you see crude oil dumping dollar by dollar by dollar by dollar each and every second it was the craziest shit i've ever seen in my life um but um again that contract is run over to the june contract so well uh but we're more interested here in equities um and, and i think that i don't know i don't i don't know what the rebalancing is it's just look we're so high up i, I the risk is definitely to the upside here I, I can't imagine someone saying oh there's no risk going long no risk going long. You know, there's, I think, extreme amount of risk. And what Bloomberg said was, you know, again, Bloomberg is very fair bias. So they said that, you know, oil is indicating a depression, but the market is only indicating a slight recession. So one of them's got to be lying. Here comes the volume, guys. Three seconds into the new minute. Damn it! So I'm still I'm still looking for a Black Friday. So um I I think we're very well uh within the realm of triggering a minus five percent day, overnight futures stop limit down. I think that's very possible, guys. Uh, and it's it's possible because VIX is trading above forty. Simple as that. Volatility is still here to stay, and that because VIX has been slammed down to zero or down to whatever it is the average, uh, you know, two hundred EMA we we climbed. 
Dude, we're above that EMA. So. This is the new norm, these big moves. Yeah, I mean, it used to be like, oh, 1%. That was a big move in a day. Not anymore. Old days. Not anymore. These are the old days now. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah, it's down like 2%. Uh -huh. Yeah, and we got to watch bonds. Bonds should be, pay up, 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 be very important here to see whether or not safe money is flowing one way or not. So I'm happy. Again, guys, we made a lower high lower low and the lower low is the most important part because i was honestly afraid that we're going to keep on making these higher highs and when without that lower low it would be for nothing but we have finally made a lower low guys we have finally made a lower low so i'm happy now we just gotta, gotta keep making lower lows um and then we can start this bear trend like i'm i'm all for this a bear trend market we gotta start trading like huge, huge the market's been in bull mode for last like you know 11 years <laughs> see that's what happens when you're trained to buy on the dip that that training is not going to go over until the method breaks and so far the method hasn't broken until the point where we're going to get this next capitulation and then next capitulation literally every single market maker is saying we're going to 3000 i can show you the 2020 uh index end targets and they're so we're already at those targets right goldman sachs is 3000 spy you know, like we're already there. We hit two two thousand nine hundred plus on that rip from the, um, um, you know, I don't know, the vaccine cure or whatever cure was, whatever that other day was. But it's just crazy. Why is I IWM? So yeah, I noticed IWM going up today. So IWM was making big up moves today. Well, not big, but it was positive today. And it's only down, was it negative two one point two percent for the day? Um IWM is making this nice move towards this channel. So we might be able to see IWM. Let's see. We might be see, see IWM. Dude, I'm tracking um uh, I also I'm also tracking the uh, 10 years versus two years spread, you know. It's going down and down and down viciously. I think IWM is trading very mechanically. What's IWM? Rot Russell. Ah. Uh. Russell, Russell, IWM. Dude, the earnings I mean, are coming positive. What the fuck? How the fuck did they do it? Yeah, that doesn't look anything like the other stuff. I mean, same Russell, IWM. Again, trading at the medium. So, break of this medium, I think we fall back down. But let's go back to SPY. We only have a few minutes here. So we did have the initial thing and then look the volume again is very weak guys this closing volume is so weak kind of wondering like that old what was it like sell in may go away thing if, is that still in play like if you look at it it's just volume so thinned out after those big buys it's like, who else is going to play with so guys, we have this miniature bear flag on the five, fifth, on the five here, but I don't really trust it. I think we should be able to go down from here, but again, the closing five is very important. So in the in the future, guys, I... crazy, right? Negative. I'm sorry, I found the negative sign. Negative thirty five forty nine. <laughs> It's not just so 3549, it's negative 3549. So you, so you get paid to get the, that asset. What a cool thing.
E, can you pull up TLT after market closes? Yeah, let me just uh, look at SPY until the end of the day. And then we'll switch yep. over to TLT too. Because I know the dollar is going up too as well today. The dollar went green today. It's trying to go back above that 100 level. Dude, where's the volume today? It's like everyone's sleeping. There's no volume. There's the lack of volume is disturbing on this closing minute. Or maybe it just hasn't happened yet. <laughs> There's only two things. One, it hasn't happened yet, or it's actually just super low. But it's, it. it's, it's shaping up to be pretty low, man. They're all singles. Wow. Like, we had the one day, day to do the most complete bear raid, and no bears were seen. They're all in, in, in Siberia. They're all in Siberia hibernating. Yeah. There are, yeah. like, chunks that go by, but not much, though. But I'm hoping this, uh, this flag breaks the downside. Would love to see it close near the lows of the day instead of the highs of the day for a change. As a bear. You guys can see oh, this yeah, kind of yeah. uptrend breaking, right? The same kind of wave. The volume is not going to count. Right, break down, retrace, back down. The volume is not going to count. Yeah, that's not, it's not. Happen for this is some huge, yeah. It's, it's not consistent, that's insane. Look how low that is. I mean, Two that's minutes. just SPY, even futures, guys. There's no volume on this. I think we're really scared for the oil stuff. Maybe they turn off the robots. Maybe they finally turn off their fucking algorithms to say buy on dip, buy on dip. If pivot is low, if we're at the low of the day, buy, 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 buy. <laughs> no stop loss. Yeah, that would be crazy. Everyone will get no. This is a pretty uh, boring close. I was hoping for a new a closes to uh, closes near the lows of the day rather than the opening minute. Hey, have, you noticed, have you guys noticed that uh, futures are doing some moves after the close of the market? Oh yeah, because futures what? don't close till later. They have a little break yeah. and they close for an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why, like, you know, you see the market close and you have, like, big, big candles. That's crazy. 30 seconds, still swifty. Okay, finally, finally. Okay, I can I can relax. So we're actually selling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, ten. Close at the low of the day, please. Close it. There. Lower five seconds. Lower. Come on. Lower. 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 On, bingo. Fantastic. Jackpot. All right. Was that lower? Ooh. Low of day. Two eighty one fifty. Oh, it matched. Shit. It was exactly the other low. That was dramatic, wasn't it? All right, okay. That was like, the most fun I've had as a bear in the last two weeks. So let's save yeah. the rest of our stuff. Okay. So I just want to do. I just want to do a quick recap of what recap. happened today. Um, go for market it. Market rebalancing at the end. We've seen a little bit of wacky stuff, but at least today it went bare, so it's not going too crazy, right? We didn't see something like I was expecting it to go down and it actually went down today. Why? Because oil, the May, the CLK20 contract, which is the May contract for oil, is now at, uh, you know, negative, right? We're at negative money. That means the person selling the future has to pay in order for delivery. 
That is completely crazy for me. It's because of the lack of supply. So how did the markets react? Well, NASDAQ went into the green today, tried to bring the markets up, and then with oil going down towards the close of NYMEX, it brought all the markets down too with it. Um, so where do we go from here? Well, I showed you guys my big trend map, which is this. It's because... Right, something that will look what? like this. It's because mainly the harder we go up, the harder we go down. Simply as that, I have more and more doubts that our American economy is in way worse shape than we actually are because I've seen propaganda. They've been putting the stimulus and recovery V-shaped, uh, liberate these countries, whatever, going back to work May 1st. In my opinion, that's all baloney. It's the baloney to distract us from the real... Uh, real issues going on and today oil showed us that this is not just a you know theoretical mathematical derivative it's a real issue going on we went negative in the futures that being said uh, i'm still hunting for that reversal and when the reversal does come um I'm, we're not only trying to take advantage of it but we're trying to get longs at a lower price remember that guys the key of this waiting for this to happen is to get a better position long going towards the future but right now, simply, I think, as a pessimist, I'm saying that, that this is not the future we want. We don't want the future when we all go outside too early, the virus rampages everything, and we have to stay in south, stay inside till 2022. When we do it the right way, the way that we should be done correctly the first way, we don't ever have to do it again. And so far, we haven't done that. Oil is done for. It's donezo. So if you're long or short, I don't know what to even say other than that price is going to stay down unless we have one major bankruptcies like Lehman Brothers kind of bankruptcies. Two, we have major war, you know, another major outputter minus the U.S. getting caught inside kind of some kind of conflict, whether it's a monetary conflict or an actual war. Unfortunately, you know, when pressure demands it, it might happen. Um, but for VIX, I think this are lottery tickets, so you can either go short. Or it can go long VIX. So if you're short on the market and you want to take a little more risk, you can instead going short on the market, just bet on volatility while going long too as well. That could also help your ass if you're going long, because if you're, you know, if the volatility the volatility does kick up, that's essentially your insurance policy. Uh, but right now I'm betting on on a short on SPY and a long on VIX. The VIX is why I like it because it's at around 39 in bottoms. And just channels between 39 and 42. And back to the VIX map. VIX is breaking out. VIX is definitely breaking out. 100%. Close. Look at that. Beautiful. I expect us to go higher and higher from here. And look, we're not. I'm not talking about plus two each day, plus three each day, down three percent, up five percent. I'm talking about plus 50 percent in one day. That's what I'm looking for, right? And no one is, right now at this point, no one is expecting this crazy, crazy drop in equities to happen anymore. Everyone has already believed this, oh, this V-shaped recovery, stimulus bill, un, you know, unprecedented stimulus, right? Bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. Trader at 50%, let's buy with the Fed. I don't care about the liquidity they're injecting to corporations. I want to inject some liquidity and buy a whole long just for SBY. You know, like, I don't care about the commercial paper. I, I care about buy the fucking ETFs. And then after you buy ETFs, you can buy my house too, right? So, <laughs> so that's the direction I think we're trending towards. And that's what I want Wall Street to do. I want Wall Street to force the Fed's hand first. And I've said this over and over again. We already forced them over and over again to do stimulus, the politics, right? They've already gave us stimulus, more stimulus. Let's force another hand. And let's force them to essentially make them buy SBY. So, going forward, look at oil, guys. Just check out oil. Uh, oil overnight should be a leading indicator, I think, because of what has happened. But to all you guys, I uh, hope you guys had a great weekend. Stay safe. Remain in your homes. Don't go outside. Don't do anything you don't need to do, right? The longer, the, the faster we get this over with, the faster it will be. I think it's impossible to okay. open back up in May. And at 5.30, the best show on earth will take place. So be, be sure to turn into that shit show. Because I'm very interested in hearing about Trump talk about oil today, actually. I, I guarantee you it's a COVID task response team. But instead, Trump might ramble about oil.
I'm there to watch it. I hope you guys are going to watch it with me. Well, Anyways. Let me let me predict it for you. That's what, what a Chinese fault. That's a Chinese fault. And he's going to blame China, blame blame Oh, him. of course. <laughs> of course. Well, what? Is he going to blame himself? Yeah. Of course not. He's yeah. going to say, that's a China, that's a Russia. That's Democrat. Democrat. That's a Nancy Pelosi. She is so nasty. She is so ungrateful. Something going to be something like that. Yeah, but anyways, um, happy 420 yeah. to you guys too. Peace out. Peace out. Uh, by the way, are we on the YouTube chat? Uh, chat we are, you're uh, very on, you're, you definitely are on the YouTube. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, shit.